This is the one with a magic monocle. A Ming the Merciless porno stash. The Nihilist ban from the Big Lebowski. Unintentional map painting. And a bombshell. <laughs> the very last Patrick Troughton serial. It's called The War Games. Here we go. We're embarking on a voyage all through time and all through space. Counting Daleks, Dal and Ood, and the Cybertronic race. Some Tarans look like taters, and Silurians all have wonky scales. And the Doctor has a TARDIS, we're reviewing all his tales. Who back when? Reviewing all of who there is. Who back when? Subscribe and read on iTunes, please. Episode by episode, we're trudging down this temporal road. Come join us on this odyssey. What other choice could there be than who back when? Who Back When? Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to C050 of Who Back When, a Doctor Who podcast. Or Doc Past. <laughs> that angelic <laughs> voice you hear in your earballs is none other than Ponkin. Say hello, me. Ponkin. Hello, hello. And you are Nick. Hello. <laughs> hello, hello Nick. Doing? Yeah, so this is a landmark. Yes, it is. For Who Back When and the universe at uh, large. It's such. I did not realise that this was going to be such an important serial. I knew that it was Patrick Tratton's last one. Yeah. But we get so many firsts. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, we go to Gallifrey for the first time. Of course, yeah. It's not the first time that we see a, a different Time Lord. Well, we've never seen Time Lords on Gallifrey before. No. What else? I feel like I mean, it's the second time that we see the Sonic Screwdriver, but I feel like it's the first time that we see it used as the Sonic is used nowadays. Like, he, uh, I mean, he yeah. doesn't reprogram, but he does tinker with the machine. Sure. I'm going to give you the Time Lords as the as the big... That's that is the, the big, big one. one. And Gallifrey. Yeah. Although they don't say Gallifrey. No, no, no. That's later on. Yeah. That's later on. That's in The Time Warrior? The Time <laughs> War? The Time Lord? The Some, Time something? We'll get to it sometime <laughs> in the future. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> uh, we also get to hear about regeneration. And, and lots of different things. Yeah. And it's it's got lots of... It, I mean, it's groundbreaking. It, I mean, yes, and, and, you know, the end of a big run for us. And Patrick. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, We're calling uh, also, him Patrick now, by the way. Uh, Pat. Pat. Come Paddy. On. Yeah, yeah, Paddy. It, it, another, another thing, by the way, the very last black and white serial. Henceforth, it's all in colour. Oh, my days. And also, it, I mean, okay, this already ended with the last serial, that, uh, the last solo, The Space Pirates. Mm. There are no more lost serials. Oh, right. So it's all in colour. It's all there. Do they do they reach standard formatting at any point? How do you mean standard like, formatting? standard programming. Do they ever get to a point where they're like like equal length serials and or episodes? Oh, wow. Yes. But I don't know when that is because it, when it's Tom Baker, it's four episodes to a serial. Okay. I don't know if that's the case with Pertwee as well, though. Well, we'll get there. Yeah. This one, ladies and gentlemen, is a fucking monster. Oh, my God. <laughs> Ten episodes. Ten episodes. Four, Four hours of who? Four muggins here. 38 minute pieces, apparently. <laughs> Thanks, dude, on Daily Motion. Don't get me wrong. I love your work. Thanks for enabling to watch and for me to watch this great serial. Oh, I'm very sorry that you saw this on Daily Motion. I watched this on a DVD, which was very kindly sent to us by one of our listeners. I wish I was here for that because I'm sure the remastered version is better. It was gorgeous. Yeah. So, uh, shout out to Liam. Thanks, Liam. I'm going to rewatch this. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's glory. <laughs> Once, I, you know, when I get a spare four hours. <laughs> so we have just finished watching this. Yeah, independently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, about half an hour ago. Yeah. <laughs> Still reeling from the experience. Yeah. I can think of a little else. There's so much to say. Well, let's start saying it. Yeah, let's, let's jump, jump into, into a beast cow. Time for us to synopsize, lobify and summarize. So take a view and grab a brief and listen to this overview. This free for all. We like to call a bite-sized chunk of who. Bite-sized chunk of who. The second Doctor and Jay Z spend ten episodes interrailing through some of humanity's greatest conflicts. Meanwhile, aliens and military cosplay hypnotoed humans from different eras to wage war in what we can only say for certain is. Not a game? Be scout over, you are welcome. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, might have felt like an insubstantial be scout. <laughs> <laughs> but as we've just alluded to, this was ten episodes fucking long. Do you feel like it needed to be ten episodes long? Uh, I think by our pithy bite-sized chunk of poo, clearly no, not. No. We clearly covered most of the main points. TARDIS Wikia reveals that this was not intended to be a ten episode arc. They uh, just, <laughs> just got really stoned, just kept <laughs> looping through. It's like, which side are we on? We're Romans right now. <laughs> <laughs> it was meant to be, oh, have I written this down? I'm sure I've written this down somewhere. I can't find it I now. I want to say sick. Oh, here we go. 
play, well, along, play along, like... ladies and gentlemen at home. How many episodes <laughs> do you think it will be? <laughs> I'm going for six. I don't know how many. <laughs> because Todd's Wiki doesn't say. Uh, they do say, however, that there was another serial called Doctor Who and the Impersonator, which was uh, Impersonators, which was cancelled because it was deemed unworkable. <laughs> and as a consequence, they extended this. Oh, actually, I think I read something, and this is probably a complete misnomer because I can't remember exactly, but the trial aspect. Yeah. Do you think that was a separate serial? That they just mushed into this one. Uh, oh, that's that's interesting. I don't know because it it's not that long. It's a very short trial. No, but that's what I mean. Like it could have been something where they go through and do a bit of a clip show, and he does. He sort of states his case. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I'm saying that cause that's they, like half an episode, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. I reckon they could have made a serial out of that. What by way of him like back and forth with Time Lords and and well, and... the Sixth Doctor has an entire season which is trial of a time lord yes and i haven't seen it have you seen it i have seen like weird little bits of a vhs okay so not the full thing but i'm fully like i definitely know the trial yeah yeah i mean if i'm not mistaken it's a whole series isn't it i think it is Uh, it may well be and i feel like it's very similar in nature like he has to justify that what he's been doing with his stolen tardis was you know it was so that good. might just be and development fulfilled maybe yeah very possible well or very possibly at that time they have the sixth doctor and they're going i don't know what to do man what am i gonna write wait let's just flip through the catalog of what we've got and yeah, like, the oh, playbook. Right. Yeah, yeah exactly oh actually hang on this we did this for 10 minutes we could have clearly done this for six months yeah yeah absolutely i mean actually in a little way i'm a bit disappointed we're starting we're starting backwards aren't we um, that's fine with the trial that it didn't because all we saw was like the yeti and the quarks and the ice warriors it's like patrick Tran did way more shit than this yeah he did he did so so much so for context <laughs> at the end of uh this serial the time lords come to judge everyone yeah. i guess uh and ultimately the doctor yeah. Um, for his crimes against Time lord Enus. Yeah. It's actually said he stole a TARDIS. This is the beginning of the myth. Yeah, lore. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Which is amazing. Yeah. And kind of the, you know, the sort of pompous, um, judgy Time Lord thing. I think that pervades. They always end up being a little bit like this. Yeah, I feel like they're slightly more... <laughs> Like, they're slightly more on the spectrum in this one than they are in, 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 in New yeah, Who. Maybe. They're a little bit like uh, the disembodied voice from Mork and Mindy. Oh, yes! That is brilliant! <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So, talking point. You okay. said you had one. Okay, I'll provide a little bit of context for this as well. We Our Beast Cow was not very fleshed out. So, th- there are these aliens. We don't yet know who these aliens are. And um, they have taken soldiers... We find this at the very end. They've taken soldiers from various eras on Earth. They've got their own, like, planet, which is very... I I got Westworld vibes from this. Sure. And all these people from Earth think that they are in their respective wars. We've got the American Civil War. We have the Thirty Year War. We have what else do we have? Crimean War. We've got General Rome. General, yeah, Rome, General Rome just Rome, Rome, uh. <laughs> uh, and lots of other stuff. And the reason that they're doing this is they say in order to well, basically recruit soldiers so that those soldiers can go out and wage war on various planets in the galaxy to make these people rulers of the galaxy. Yeah, to bring peace to a galaxy. No, which no one knows yeah. which galaxy. So why would would they go and pick primitive humans to do this when they have laser weapons? Now, see, I'm not necess- That's not the big problem because we could just arm. It, yeah, it, but they it, don't do that. They don't like train no, 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 these they're, they're, humans. That, that's to, the point. Yeah. That's, that's the that's the big problem. It's not. It's like if they pass some sort of test, then they get kitted up and brainwashed and given like you know the they, they've still got their primitive savage. Uh, do you think that's the idea? I think that's the idea, but the problem with for me is is that if what you were trying to do is throughout the all of human history pick the best warriors, yeah, why would you just put them in essentially a holodeck and yeah. carry, let them carry on? Do just sit there and watch all of nineteen fourteen. Pick the winners on Earth. Done. Done. Kid- kidnap them and make them your soldiers. Equally, you put them all in a room and give them the same weaponry. Yeah, and yeah, that'll, exactly. That'd be good too, right? I mean, there are. <laughs> Also, think about this. So these aliens, they didn't just go to Earth and, and kidnap humans from various times. They also got horses. <laughs> like they, they kidnapped horses. No, but also, they brought back trucks. Here's the other thing. is that, So they picked all the people from 1914 to 1918, right? Or yeah. 1917. 1917. Like, what the fuck are we talking about? 1917. Um, which, by that point, the war is turning. Yeah. Pretty heavily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, okay. Um, <laughs> so they, what did they pick? Who, which side did they pick? Or did they 
get them all. Well, one alien was an was a German, and oh, one yes, alien yeah. was an Eng- Englishman. That's real. One was the the butcher, and the other one was the whatever the scar. <laughs> Why would you pick the Germans? I don't know. Okay. However, <laughs> I've got a piece of trivia for you. Yeah. There is a time lord working with these aliens. These aliens are not the, time lords. The throughout, war by the chief. Way, the war chief. Yeah. So throughout the serial, up until the point where it was revealed, oh, actually, hang on, there is a time lord here, and the, the words or the term time lord is actually uttered. Um, up until that point, I assumed that all of these people were time lords. Me too, because that would make loads more sense. Yeah. Or at least like... Because there's clearly time travel yeah, some, and, and whatnot. Uh, and some faction of them. But what didn't make sense is that middle management was the Time Lord. Not <laughs> the head honcho. I thought that was pretty badass. What do you mean? Did we do... Oh, uh, which one is it? Okay, so he, there's another Time Lord who's appeared before. He's appeared in two serials. One of them is the one that we constantly refer back to, The Chase. And before that, there was the Time Meddler. And he was the monk, the meddling monk. Mm. And he also, I mean, in, in The Meddling Monk, he's like a, a Richelieu-type dude, even though he's completely solo. He's just, you know, pulling strings. And then in The Chase, he recruits himself <laughs> as middle management for the Daleks. And he's like, I mean, I can't take over the world, but you guys can. I'll make it happen. And in this one, the, the dude does the exact same thing. And then, you know, nefariously in the background, he's going, yes, but I'm also going to turn myself into, I believe it was the Supreme Galactic Ruler or something like that. <laughs> Oh, it's such a great title. Just, Can you imagine the business card? Yeah, but, the uh, Supreme Galactic Compass. <laughs> but what? I, oh, wait, hang on. I had a, I had a thing to say. Oh, yeah. So there's a piece of trivia. He appears in a couple of novels and in a graphic novel as well. Oh, are they prequels? Actually, presumably they must be, right? Because he dies in this one. Mm. And what he does there, at least in one, is he goes back to Nazi Germany and tries to recruit the Nazis to be agents for his cause. I think that's the graphic novel. That sounds cool. That sounds pretty badass, that actually. Sounds super cool. Yeah. Although, I mean, I feel like they would have rejected him pretty much down based on the moustache alone. I was just about to say, they seem pretty okay with unorthodox, you know, <laughs> facial hair. <laughs> it has to be tidier than that, though. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I liked it. He, he looks like, uh, what's his name, Shang Tsung in Mortal Kombat. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a trucker in an aero suit. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, so yeah, I mean, he has gone back and recruited other people from history before, or at least attempted to. So, I mean, one thing that went through my head whilst watching this, yeah. before the war chief turns up, yeah. and before the warlord turns up, I A assumed the war chief was the head honcho, yeah. and then there was another head honcho. It was like, it went through bosses, didn't it? We yeah. saw Smy, then we're like, he's the boss. Right? I, I assumed then, the warlord was going to be yeah, yeah. the, you know, and then we have Germany the war doctor the now. Boss, and then, yeah, every yeah. like year. But anyway, I thought the warlord was going to be the time lord, because yeah. that, that follows too, right? That yeah. scans. Absolutely. And, and It so, turns out their race is called warlords. Well, and then, so, yeah, which is weird. Yeah. And then subsequently, I thought the Warlord could be the first iteration of the Master, not really knowing Ooh. where that turns up. Because that would be badass too. Uh, did you think the exact same thing about the Warlord that I'd thought? Namely, holy shit, he looks exactly like our mate Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yeah, sort of. Exactly like the yeah. screenshot. <laughs> if Steve approves. <laughs> if Steve approves. Lord, that'd be a <laughs> Tinder pick. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. I, I was I was a little let down by the whole thing, how snivelly the war chief ended up being, yeah. how he sort of quibbled with this. And um, and the le- for 10 serials, or 10, 10 episodes in a serial, why they couldn't give more exposition to the warlords, where they fit in in this pantheon of stuff. The whole thing is described as a game, which... I mean, it's it's called the War Games. It's only at the very end that the War Chief ham fists the uh, the explanation for it, the the actual cause, the root cause for it, but or the motivation rather. But for the longest time, I assumed that they're doing this for fun. Like they are, they're like headhunters, basically. This is like war tourism to them. Yeah, like Westworld. Like it was, it was that kind of feel. Or if you accept the Star Trek parlance, oh, the Herosian. Oh wait, hang on, remind me. Voyager. They're basically like Predator. They're sort of like ripoffs, I guess. Oh, I see. And yeah, yeah. At some point, they go on the holodeck and are Nazis. I don't know, but they're doing it for the love of the sport, and they get you know, I don't know some shit. Gotcha. Um, but, but there is the film Predators yes. as well, where the Predators have collected humans from different parts of the earth. Yes, of course. And then they're now forced to collaborate. That's what they should have done here. They should have got like, oh, here's a Nazi and here's a whoever and here's a Confederate soldier and here's someone else, a Roman. Now you guys form a team and collaborate and kill these whatever. Yes, that would have also been acceptable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's my question to you then. Okay, go for it. Up. If you had to pick three warring oh. factions of the human race throughout time to be your intergalactic 
Galactic Army, which three would you pick? Not just the ones depicted in no, this no, series. Anyway, we're going through the entirety of human endeavor. And feel free to play along at home. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fun, fun I, for all the family. Uh, Red Army. Right. Mm, Romans, I guess. Right. For the strategy. Mm hmm. Uh, and just the training and so on. I don't know. Maybe samurai. Yeah. See, that's what I was. That's my first. My first pick is basically that whole Battle of Sekigahara era samurai. That's Bingo Bongo. Cool. Um, and the Mongols, like Genghis Khan level Mongols. Yeah, but then you don't have. I mean, whom are they going to fight? This is going to turn into a very different episode. <laughs> oh, Who are they fighting? They're, Let's do a cage they're, match. They're, they're fighting um, whatever fucking planet we choose to. Well, you're Put Mongols from what Kublai Khan's time. Oh yeah, with some, some like with some, laser guns. Yeah, laser guns. Half of them are going to blow their own faces off, man. Oh, they'll have a little bit of training. <laughs> well, we can import that stuff, but the savagery. That um, is true. Yeah. So okay. Mongols, samurai, and then I'm going to go for ooh ooh. That's difficult. You could go, go for, for someone the... who knows guerrilla warfare as well. Oh yeah, like the Viet Cong. Bingo. There you go. Viet Cong would be badass. Yeah, yeah. All of those together fighting aliens well, for the, the for the for the like organizational skills, the, like British Expeditionary Force. <laughs> well, like like Zulu, that kind so, of thing. Yeah, yeah. kind of. Holy shit! I mean, they were bad in that particular. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that particular but generally speaking, they were. Yeah. Fairly organized, ruthless, horrible fucks. <laughs> okay, so returning to the serial. <laughs> no, that was awesome. I like that. Returning to the serial. Did you also think that it turns out apparently the key to good espionage is just screaming at the top of your lungs? <laughs> <laughs> also, how often do they get, get accused of, of being, being sp spies? spies? Everyone. 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 You're a spy. Even when they're taken in America and during the Civil War, they're accused of being, like, spies of the Empire. At one point, they're captured by the, the, the North. Yeah. Yeah. The, the first time they're captured by the North, the, the Yankees, as it were. Rescued by a, a rebellion, which Rescued is part, by the, part, re, part Unionists, part Confederates, and part someone else. I feel it, like there's no, like no, a no, Napoleonic no, no. soldier it, no, in there as Initially, well. it's just Unionists, and then they're rescued by Confederates. It's the, 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 they have that Southern drawl dude who has an awful no Southern drawl at all. But he's like, oh, ma'am, it's always... Good to be nice to women, you know. Wait, 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 wait. Doesn't that mean that what I said before we press record is true then? Was Harper a Confederate soldier? Was he a black Confederate no, soldier? No, no, that comes later. Okay. Harper turns up a little bit later. Um, because what I'm about to say is that then someone from the Confederate Army says, They're traitors. I was like, you just rescued them. <laughs> Why would the ah. Union of Army have them tied up? Ah, but it's... isn't that because the... Oh, that's because they hear them speak and they're like, oh, right, wait, hang yeah, on, you're, you're English. English. Yeah. yeah, I'm Scottish. I'm Scottish, uh, yeah, you're English. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're ready? Okay. Yeah, which is fair. From that scene, I just thought of a question. Go on. So their leader during the Civil War in that whatever, in that part of Westworld... <laughs> Their leader is Scar. He's the dude with the whatever, yeah. who is also the German warlord. Yes, he is. He's the, is he the only one who has multiple areas? I mean, Smythe might do, but I feel like he wouldn't get now. away with being any other nationality. Yeah, what would he be? Actually, he could clearly be a Nazi. Yeah. A hundred percent. Smythe would, uh, and he would probably have a better German accent than the German guy. Oh, accents my God. Stuff. There was actually one dude who was pretty good. Which one? I uh, can't remember. The, the guy who... Oh, the guy that starts the interrogation? Yeah. He was clearly fucking German. No, he was definitely fucking English, but he so? definitely spoke German. Yeah. Like, fluently. Yeah, as well as I yeah. say, he, at the very least, his German was very good. But up until that point, we had... <laughs> how often does this happen in, in TV and film? Someone actually goes, Mach schnell. <laughs> Mach schnell. <laughs> there are other German phrases, you know. <laughs> He's like, Hände hoch, Mach schnell. Yeah, but... Um, I feel like that probably gets used a lot in warring Germany. Okay, yeah, sure. Right? <laughs> Hurry up. <Yeah. laughs> By the way, the ambulance that they're in, yeah. trivia point, an actual honest-to-God straight-up World War One ambulance. Shit. Yes. That seems like a really poor use of what would have been quite an important <laughs> an heirloom yeah, of yeah. our history. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they really fucked it up, too. <laughs> Okay, quick question. Back Go for to it. thing. Favorite non doc posse character in this 10 episode arc? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. There are so many. Mm. Mm. You can break it down into combatants and aliens if you like. Oh, it's a tough one. 
I, I, I really enjoyed the War Chief. Mm. I thought the War Chief was pretty great because he was such a cartoonish character. Yeah. Uh, I think that if you're going to look like that much like Ming the Merciless with a full head of hair and yeah. a hairy suit, <laughs> you should be the fucking boss. You should be <laughs> yes. the warlord. They clearly spent way more on him than on... You know, not Steve. You're not Steve. Yeah. <laughs> Poor old Steve. He doesn't even listen to this. <laughs> doesn't even like Doctor Who. <laughs> he should, though. Hang on, wait. I'm, I'm looking for a piece of trivia. Uh, the guy who plays the war chief, Edward Brayshaw, has been on Doctor Who before, and we've encountered him. He played in The Reign of Terror, and I swear to God, this is the only one of these I remember for this reason. His name was Leon, and <laughs> <laughs> and he was like a a really suave, sexy dude. Like he was a he really was a suave, sexy account manager. No, he was he was like a <laughs> <laughs> he was like a, a James Bond ish character because he was a double agent and was like this suave dude. He would shut up women and like mm. kind of you know that Bond archetype. And here he's a cartoon. He's the exact opposite. So yeah, anyway, War Chief. Um, uh, let's do one each. Let's ping pong this. My favourite is Carstairs because a his name just sounds like an improbable machine. It, yeah, <laughs> worst mode of transport ever. Like, like the, the, the stairs at, at, at the airport. An airport. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Carstairs. <laughs> his his legacy. He's heir to the Carstairs <laughs> fortune. <laughs> Anyway, yes, Lieutenant Carstairs or whatever. He was pretty good. He also followed the sort of unit model. As being a fucking crack shot with a pistol. Yeah, total badass. Just take take down 20 Confederate, you know, yeah. fucking soldiers, no problem with my Luger. <laughs> <laughs> he would absolutely be on my list as well for the scene where he throws a grenade into the enemy TARDIS alone. So badass. Same scene, different dude. Don't know his name. The guy who actually possibly did take part in the Zulu Wars. The guy with the, I don't know what to call all that helmet like it's a, makes me think of a safari hat uh, oh yeah who when the machine gunners get shot in that same scene he just runs in steps over their corpses picks up a machine gun and like fucking mitrailleurs two of the big lebowski band members yeah okay he was badass it's pretty badass what a leader yeah, yeah. <laughs> did um, you like the mexican chap <laughs> i really didn't um just for not because... <laughs> <Okay, so laughs> Who is he supposed to be? Um, I don't know. This is what I wrote down in my notes when he turned up on screen. I wrote, Enter stage rights, Mexican Arturo and his band of sneaky foreigners. But let's not judge them yet. Some of them are rapists. They're murderers. And some of them, I'm sure, are good people. <laughs> <laughs> Such a stereotype. He shows up with a fucking sombrero, <laughs> eats, like, steals their food, throws a plate on the floor, has no manners whatsoever just wants to kill people yeah but yeah. i mean <laughs> I, I don't know who he's supposed to be you know like everyone else has sort of general archetype sure general archetype general archetype um <laughs> but i d yeah I, I didn't get him and his late inclusion into the fold made no fucking sense to me and as well as like he ended up being what se seemed like the lead savage leader right of the yeah. resistance when when the doc flip flops and and you know he seems to be the guy which kind of makes you think i don't immediately leap to mexico this is the most savage murderous <laughs> you know what i'm saying like that's not in my head <laughs> I don't think, yeah. Yeah, agreed. Maybe I should. I don't know much about Mexican history. Maybe they're fantastic soldiers. I have no idea. Let's go back to the Civil War bits. Mm. We have, for the first time in a long time, a black actor. Yeah. Finally. I, and unfortunately, he buys it super duper soon. But he's quite good for a short time. Exactly. But up until that point, they, he, like, he's a, is he possibly the only one who shows some heart of all the non-doctor DJ people? Um, or maybe well, Carstairs. Because no, he does try to kill, um, the war chief. Chief. No, not the war no, chief. Uh, he that, to... No, he tries to kill Scarface. He wants to kill Scarface, and Jamie says no because we oh, need that's him true. for the doctor. Um, and then he says, I'll kill you too. Sure, okay, yeah. No, okay, that is true. Not that he doesn't have heart, but I also think that that might be the first black character hitherto that wasn't just some deaf, dumb, mute brute. No. Deaf, dumb, mute brute. With one exception, you're right. There was a, a woman in, oh, what was it called? It was another one that you, you and I did together, I think. Oh, yes, shit. Uh, uh, the w world something. Uh, Scaramanga. Yes, what was it called? Uh, and not uh, Something of the world. Enemy of the world. Enemy of the world. Yeah. Yeah. Scaramanga. What the fuck was his name? The Salamander. Salamander. Yeah. You're a kid there. <laughs> <laughs> 
What did you think of the War University? <laughs> the, oh, it was terrible. <laughs> Wasn't it so bad? <laughs> I mean, it was really, really bad. And also, I mean, the class is fairly small. What did it look like? How did it's they what, not it, notice there were three new students in the audience? Yeah, and the, the corridors looked like they were made up of, like, beds, oh. beds without mattresses just upturned on each other. Oh, you know what? Oh, uh, okay. Well, the sets, I love the sets. Really? I thought the set looked amazing. At some point, I liked my notes the have swirly actually written pattern that. one. The swirly, like... Yeah, that one. Oh, also, Sick, yeah, also. Kitsch as fuck. You mean when they're Vord hiding behind the panel? Yeah. They like literally. Oh, actually, he sonics the panel, mm. and he is what like a meter away from some from everyone else. No one sees them. They even go in through the hole, grab Jamie, and go back out. No one notices. Total Vords. But the lecture was particularly awful. Oh, it was terrible. Also, I feel like if you just jumped on something, like, I don't know, you're in an engineering lecture and you start, like, I don't know how this laser works. Just be like, campus security immediately. Fuck yeah. you. Um, <laughs> don't touch anything. What's wrong with you? Or, or possibly, who are you again? I haven't seen you in my class. Yeah. You know, you're not one of the eight very memorable people in my class. So you're much too old to be a student. <laughs> yeah. And why are you wearing a bow tie? <laughs> the device itself, the hypno adv- device thing, wasn't as good as the monocle or the glasses. Yeah, I agree with you, but I think towards the... Maybe it's towards the end, the device is used, the processing, whatever, mind processor, let's call it, is used much more effectively. Well, it's the whole fucking plot for like three or four episodes. It's who's got it. And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there are some parts where, where I thought it was a really good plot device, where it was really interesting. I was like, oh, wow. And now you're using it to turn people good again. And is there maybe be some moral ambiguity there how come the doctor is allowed to you know brainwash people quote unquote you know how do they know who's on the right side and on the wrong side and mm. Mm. i don't know i thought it worked however then towards the <laughs> when the bad guys finally grab the device that is the worst cliffhanger i've written that that is the worst cliffhanger of nine cliffhangers <laughs> where <laughs> when they just turn up and the doctor for no reason runs to them <laughs> just hands himself over to them next question then okay go for it what's the best cliffhanger oh oh wait 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 this is easy it's, uh, it's, be easy. it's a hundred a hundred percent the cliffhanger of episode nine as in nine to ten. Oh, that's not yeah. what i thought you'd say really yeah, oh on. what do you think so what was that again so that's when the time lords clearly are on arrival they slow down time and there was oh yeah I mean, end of episode uh, nine and start of episode 10 i was genuinely fearful of the arrival of time lords for his sake because i knew that oh, when they arrive that i mean i know this is his last serial Maybe they're going to take one of his lives. I didn't know how it was going to happen, but I really didn't want it to happen. And when time slows down, you can see how afraid he is. Amazing stuff. For me, it's when little Jamie gets gunned down. Ugh. Yeah, man, no. that's sad. Because, again, similarly to a few episodes back, when he gets gunned down... Uh, in the, or possibly gunned down in another one. I thought that might be how he fucking buys it, knowing that this was definitely the serial that, you know, he stops being a companion. I thought they were yeah. just going to just like... Just kill him, him off like that. Off he goes. Uh, I just didn't feel like... I didn't buy it. I didn't feel like he really died. I don't know which episode it is. I think I've written something like when he... Yeah, I've written Jamie is killed in quotes. Oh, no, yeah. man, I had it again. I, I don't know. I guess I think of the 70s as a less sentimental time. Hmm. Um, okay, so from that to the farewell of the companions, uh, this was such a letdown to me. Such a letdown. Oh, Jamie, Jamie in specifically. Particular. Yes. yes. Oh, my God! <laughs> Great minds think alike! Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, the fuck? He didn't care at all. He remembers one whole journey. He's been to a, an entirely different world. He couldn't care less i mean i think the doctors like because because the, the time lord laugh and go ha 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 he'll never you know off he goes now they'll just live their lives yeah and the doc's just like okay i guess it's like no well he's your longest serving companion you yeah fuck. and not just that he doesn't remember being that anymore no which is worse it's well, absolutely worse i mean that's essentially death yeah. in the character world. That, that, exactly that personality is gone it's been replaced with a different personality no it was really sad very very sad mm-hmm. zoe i guess is like zoe oh, at well, least has the memory of the wheel in space well i mean she's from the wheel in space no as in like oh the, the, the serial yeah, the serial, yeah. yeah so she is at least retained some knowledge yeah you're right what do you think about about the big one though the big departure oh uh, the doctor departure the doctor obviously we'll be doing a retrospective oh yeah yeah absolutely absolutely I was really saddened. I mean, really saddened. I've grown to love Troughton. Do you know what? I think I prefer Troughton to Hartnell, by the way. Yeah. I think I do. 
I think on as a corpus, but then yeah. you know development and all that. Sure. Um, I do think though, with with the death of Charlton or the you know as it were the regeneration. Yeah. It was a little bit like the descent into dementia or something. Do you mean like he powers down? Like, Whoa, and he stops like not being able to. Oh, he pulls a face. And, There's yeah. an actual grimace as and the transformation starts. It's horrible. Um, it was actually really uncomfortable. And he flies into this terrible vortex. So yeah. it's... And does like the world's worst Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> <laughs> So it, uh, apparently the reason there wasn't a proper, quote-unquote, regeneration, because, I mean, we've seen the first regeneration. They already had the concepts in mind, but the reason it didn't happen was that negotiations with the next Doctor were not finished yet. So they, uh, Damn it, BBC. You yeah, shit together. They, they filmed that scene. Tortoise Wiki said something like two or three weeks before negotiations were completed. So they didn't know, and it wasn't 100% sure that it was going to be Pertwee. See, that's what's great about living in the 21st century is that now the BBC have lo- locked down their next two, exactly. three doctors. They probably know. I mean, they, they, they probably have a short list. They've got a list. They've got a list. Yeah, negotiations absolutely. already started. Yeah. Well, you know, they're yeah. dropping hints. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Next one's Angelina Jolie. Oh, <laughs> God. How would you say that? I don't know. It's dreadful. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but it, it was really sad. And also, I, I see, I don't remember what the situation is with Pertwee. Pertwee has a TARDIS. He just can't use it. Is that how it works? Does he live in his TARDIS? Is that what, what the spiel is? I think, I think, and again, I don't know. I think there might be that there's some portion of the first series. He can't. He's just bumbling about. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's landlocked. Yeah. yeah. And that's why he teams up with, with units and, and we get the whole season of that. Yeah. But there's another, there's a line in this one in which they tell Troughton we're going to take the secret of time travel away from you and that almost resonates with your comment about dementia like are they going to make him forget about this I don't think so I think that I was just one of those flippant like poetic comments I think the secret is just we're going to take away we're going to take your TARDIS I think I feel like he has a TARDIS I'm sure I remember Pertwee in his TARDIS but maybe that's from later I suppose it might be from later it might be during the unit thing that he finds the TARDIS or finds a way Maybe. to go to Gallifrey and nick another one or nick the same one. Yeah. Oh man, I'm really looking forward to I'm really I, I remember seeing Spearhead from Space as a child. Ah uh, no, see. Oh yeah. Not live, obviously, but <laughs> <laughs> I have my own TARDIS. I just stole it. <laughs> I love that part, by the way. Yeah. He stole it, he was bored with the Time Lords. It was really good. It was wonderful. He was time bored. He... <laughs> I had to look up, by the way. So, do you remember Clara, the impossible girl? Mm. She was after affected into various parts of Classic Who, including a part where Hartnell steals a TARDIS. Yeah. And whilst watching this serial, I figured, oh, that's what they did, right? They took this room and they turned this room into, well, they just, you know, popped Hartnell into this room they didn't they didn't massive anticlimax what did they do in new who it's just a it's a it, the TARDIS has looked completely different oh and the it's a different kind of hallway yeah I know yeah that's sad question for you mm-hmm. the bits in, on Gallifrey that we get to see here did they take place in the Doctor's future which Doctor's future this Doctor's future the second Doctor's future are they more advanced than the Doctor because the TARDISes are certainly more advanced than his TARDIS so the War Chief alludes to the idea that he's from the future has, has come a long way yeah hmm yeah, right. But actually, that's a good point. If you're going, Isn't it if just? you're going to call Time Lords, which Time Lords do you call? Whoa! Do you call when the co- ones when Time Lords call each other? Yeah, or no, because at some point uh, the Doctor says, I'm, "I need to call the Time Lords." Does he call the ones from the time in which he's in, or the time in which he came, or potentially he's even further into the stream, right? maybe people who are you know parallel to the War Chief because they all have yeah. the same TARDIS that the War Chief has. So there's at least. Well, there could be at least three, three different. different time streams going yeah. on. Which Time Lord sh- showed up? I don't know, man. I think he is in the most distant past. I mean, for these people. Yeah, so chronologically speaking, it's Doctor, I think, we, War Chief, and then We've Gallifrey. had no talk about whether Gallifrey exists outside of time or ever. No, not yet, anyway. I mean, I don't know how that would work, but you know what I'm saying. Because that would solve this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I okay. mean, like, they're, they're sort of omniscient in a way. They know of every time ever, and they exist in every time ever, and... But then that can't no, work that doesn't for the work. Doctor, because he's always the spoilers, the blue book, yeah. River Song. Etc. Yeah. Etc. No, oh, unless he left, he came to it. time. Okay, okay, yeah, go for it. Go for it. So basically, time isn't this linear progression of cause to effect. Oh, what is it then? <laughs> 
It's more <laughs> of a oh, a sort of what would you call it? Wibbly, only wibbly, or no, no, wobbly as well. Oh, that's good. Timey, a buzz also. Why me? Maybe stuff. Oh, ball of stuff actually. Ball of stuff. Yeah, yeah. that got away from me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, got a question for you. More. Right. The different time zones mm. on this planet, this unnamed planet, are they actually th- different times? Do they actually exist in different times? Or have they just been made up to look like different times? And then they there's say a say as much as we've given them things. We've made a thing that looks like their time. Oh, okay. To try oh, them or whatever. The thing is, is that though, uh, again, in the first couple of episodes, I think some of the historical characters say, "Oh, a, a fog descended upon us, and then we're here. We were." Um, yeah. So the fog obviously has some sort of transport capability, rather than it just being a doorway between your big hangar. In but it space. also seemed to be some sort of force field because other most of the people who have been monocled or eyeglassed, they're unable to go through the the fog. Yep. That's- and also, and this is the one thing that I've got in my notes. We get to see the arrival of the Romans twice. And it is, in fact, the exact same clip of the exact same Romans. So what I was thinking was... In every single time, is that actually a time? So, like, let's say every time that you pass no, no, from see, one o- over across a border, you are always arriving at the same time. What you're doing there is writing around what is essentially just the BBC saving money. <laughs> <laughs> but that would be kind of cool, I think. That would be kind of cool. <laughs> now we're back to the future moment here. It's, it's totally just, work. It's just the same. Let's rewrite this thing. Over again. Oh, we're doing this, and then we fan film it in color this time. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be actual games. <laughs> Why is it called the War Games? Because you, the War Games, you know War Games. Yes, I know War Games. Oh, I get it now. <laughs> <laughs> Military exercises. Yeah, yeah, now I get, now I get it. <laughs> My mind had to go, games, War Games. War Games? <laughs> the, uh, oh, what's his name? <laughs> Someone's day off, Ferris Bueller's day off. <laughs> what? He was in a film called War Games. Oh, from yes, that of course to, he was. Oh, that's what War Games actually means. <laughs> and then back to the room. <laughs> No. Right. So, yeah, exactly. So here's my note. I've, I've written, Roman still running. Is this the same time as before? But it's not. Mm. It's no, a no. different set of Romans, because, you know, they were like five, six hundred years Romans or more. These are exactly the same Romans. They are running exactly in the same place. But you're oh, yeah. right. They're I'm obviously... Just, I'm just saying, them. have they got more? Because they, they had loads of war zones that weren't, we didn't get to see. Yeah. yeah. It's like Westworld. Oh, this is so exciting. I don't know what the fuck Westworld is. Oh, it's amazing. Uh, and also, watch the film. But don't watch the sequel Future World there's also a TV show Westworld a classic TV show I haven't seen it anyway it doesn't matter uh, this note the Romans are still running is this the same time as before comes exactly after my note holy shit he looks exactly like Steve and <laughs> I think acts as a good segue to another piece of recycled footage in fact three other pieces of recycled footage did you notice this no at the very end when the doctor is or sorry as in the doctor and Jay-Z in the TARDIS when they've escaped this is at the start of episode 10 they rematerialize I want to say thrice once they descend onto water yeah that's taken from that's the start of Fury from the Deep another one that you and I reviewed together they materialize in space and we actually in this clip even get to see a web appearing on it it's the (laughs) exact same clip they took the same clip from Web of Fear I like it No, th- there's no explanation for it. And then there's another one which I didn't recognize, which I've found online, and that apparently is just an exterior of the TARDIS from the Wheel in Space. Hey. Right. Yeah. But, the, like, I mean, it's so blatant. Yeah. It's so blatant. They could have just, you know, they could have cut it before the web appears. Why not do that? Why keep a bit of web? I am. Just so that everyone can go, oh, is the Green Trouncers back? There's all foreshadowing of lots of, like, is little bits of, is Trouncers greatest hits in tiny little, <laughs> you know, yeah. cinematography. I don't Man. know. I have no idea. Um, Oh, here's a question. Go for it, hit me. TARDIS. Yeah. Or other TARDIS. Okay, first off, the other TARDISes had a name. Oh, what was it? They were Sidrats. Really? Yeah. They're Sidrats. They were Sidrats. Because I just said that. Yeah. Not knowing. Not knowing. <laughs> like, <laughs> what's the laziest thing I could think yeah. of? Sidrats. Oh, like Sidrats. <laughs> they were Sidrats. Space um, in relative and time. <laughs> <laughs> Dimensions. Fuck, I forgot the dimensions. <laughs> Wait, hang on. I've, I've written down what it actually meant, as in what it actually stands for. Hang on, I'm going to find lads. it. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> So, this is taken directly from uh, TARDIS Wikia. The space-time machines that the War Chief provides for the games are only named SIDRAT once in Episode 7, when it's pronounced SIDRAT. The acronym is never explained on screen, but in the novelization, also by Malcolm Hulk, 
<laughs> of incredible fame. Uh, <laughs> Malcolm's. <laughs> it's revealed to stand for Space and Intertime Directional Robot All Purpose Transporter. <laughs> that was definitely a. That was going really well until a robot. Robot. <laughs> <laughs> that is such an after construction. That's like, let's just call it the opposite. Like, let's call it the reverse. We'll figure out what it stands for afterwards, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Intertime directional robot all purpose transporter. <laughs> all purpose? All purpose. <laughs> all of them. All every of them. every purpose. <laughs> every one of them. <laughs> Robots. <laughs> By the way, I really loved it when he was mixing the directional, whatever, what was it called? The space vector, whatever thingy. Yeah. And he makes the interior of the TARDIS or of the Sid Rat really tiny. Very cool. I quite like the look of it. it yeah, it, like it also looks really nice. Brilliant fridge. <laughs> and the door is amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Like a side loading. <laughs> and it's described in color in the episodes. Green. I really thought that's... As an antagonistic yeah. color of blue? I... Surely red. Yeah. Or black. Or black. Yeah. I mean... Which okay, is what so you... look like. Well, I mean, exactly. So you have the TARDIS, which looks like a police box, which every person watching the show in the 60s knows to be blue. So it's obviously, like, you can call it a blue box because everyone recognizes the police box mm. in this case no one knows what that is it just looks like a menacing future thing like a future fridge yeah. and then everyone on the production team knows that it's going to be dark grey slash black why not just say that it's black I can't remember who it was now but there's some alien on Classic Who in, in Hartnell that was described as having a different colour than he actually had because yeah, the production yeah. team knew that, like, oh, no one's going to think that that thing is pink. Like, we're just going to say there's something else. And there was a horse that was painted. Yes. When was that? Who painted a horse? That was something. Like the it was a unicorn. The it was the unicorn fucker. in yes, in the mind fucker. Uh, <laughs> mind robber. The the mind robber. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I've got another trivia connection thing. I just need to find it. Hang on. We actually did allude to this when we did the mind fucker. Uh, new title. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm just going to read out. It's a, it's a paragraph and a half. Mm. Bernard Horsefall. <laughs> Great <laughs> name. <laughs> what were your ancestors known for? <laughs> <laughs> He made several guest appearances on Doctor Who, perhaps most famously as Chancellor Goth in The Deathly Assassin. He's also appeared as a member of the Time Lord Tribunal, who tried and exiled the Second Doctor at the conclusion of the War Games. He was also Lemuel Gulliver in The Mind Robber. Oh, shit! Yeah, and do you remember? Oh, okay, so hang on, I'll jump to the second paragraph, because this is what we actually discussed when we did The Mind Robber. Was he a fucking Time Lord? Exactly! Yeah. So here's what it says. A popular theory among fans, based on the fact that both characters were played by Horsefall, is that the Time Lord officiating over the Doctor's trial in the War Games was Goth. We know that. This was confirmed. Wait, what? We know that. So the thing that we discussed... It started off so well. I know. Okay, so let's, let's fill in the blanks with what we remember from Mind Robber. What it said there was something to the effect of there's a novel or there's something else which at least hints at some Time Lord infiltrating the Mind Robber's world. Uh, I can't remember what it was called, mm. The Land, and pretending to be Lemuel Gulliver. Yes. And that's why he helps the Doctor. Anyway, yeah. so this is the guy. Now we've met him again. Terrible trivia. Awful. <laughs> started off incredibly well. <laughs> anyway, yeah, he's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Another question. Go for it. Best costume of this pantheon of, oh. of costumes. I mean, it's going to have to be one of the future dudes in spandex, I think. I, d I knew you were going to say yeah. that. <laughs> one of the, like, gimpy flashes. Yeah, it's the dudes who are... It's the Nihilist bands. Yeah. Like, <laughs> the, the, why are they wearing, <laughs> like, full body suit spandex? Must have cost a fortune. I, I know. Leather, in yeah. sunglasses alone. Yeah. I feel like Spanner wasn't even invented at that point. <laughs> God, imagine how, my, how they're sweating. Oh. So sexy. I want to I wanna get one of those outfits, not even for cosplay, just for my own personal fun. That's what we should do at Oxford Comic Con. That? <gasps> we could all be in this weird spandex thing. No one will ever know. <laughs> With those laser rifles. Yeah. So people at least assume that we're sci-fi characters. Let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> Oh, 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 Go on. Guess who was in this? Not just Patrick Troughton, but Patrick Troughton's son, David Troughton. Dave Troughton? Dave Troughton. Who is Dave Troughton? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. <laughs> he played Private Moore. Don't know who that is. Yes, I do know. Is that the do badass, know. maybe? Is that no, the no. Think Private... Is he Animal Mother? 
from this one. What? <laughs> Full Metal Jacket, man. Oh, yeah. No. Oh, where's Private Moore? It does ring a bell. Yeah? Yeah. I'm not sure who, who that is. But anyway, so that's, that's Pat Troughton's kid. Uh, Pat Troughton's kid, by the way, also appeared, um, in the third doc- Doctor story, The Curse of Peladon. Uh, where he played King Peladon himself. Uh, he also reprised that role in Companion Chronicles, The Prisoner of Peladon, and so on and so forth. And we've encountered him before. He played an uncredited god in Enemy of the World. In fact, I sort of remember saying that at the mm. time. Yeah. Anyway, boom, Shazam, cool. Another cool thing. <laughs> Not just did Michael Craze appear on the show. He he played the companion Ben Jackson. Mm. Uh, we also get Peter Craze, <laughs> his kid brother in this one. Cray craze. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he also appeared in uh, the Space Museum. That's pretty cool, as Deco. Uh, in this one, he plays Dupont, which I think is the guy who has the worst French accent ever. <laughs> they all had pretty bad accents. Yeah, they do. They're all fairly awful. <laughs> <laughs> Doc introduces himself as Dr. John Smith. What is your name? Why don't you just call me Doctor? That is not a name. I want your full name. Oh, very well. Uh, Dr. John Smith. Yo, is that the first go at that? Uh, no, he's been John Smith in other cases. He was that in Chameleons, whatever that was called, I can't remember. Grab some sound bites before we head into uh, ratings. Just because it's really, really fun, in episode three, we get this little nugget. Perhaps I can pick this lock. Uh, with a tuning fork? <laughs> Because that's a reference to the Lost Serial, the Space Pirates, where he actually used a tuning fork. I thought that was kind of fun. Another sound bites from episode six. The war chief. His people have the secret of time travel. Are you suggesting he's bringing in his own people? The Time Lords. First time mentioned on Doctor Mm. Who. Pretty rad. Episode eight. You may have changed your appearance, but I know who you are. Which leads to some spin-off, don't know what it is, this is the War Chief again, in, I think, one of the novels, he's said to be an old friend of the Doctor's. Oh. Like, in, in previous incarnations. That means Hartnell, right? Yeah. So Hartnell was young, probably just boning everyone, and this dude was also young, possibly looked... Actually, he must have looked the exact same, because Troughton recognises him, right? Mm. So imagine a younger version with the exact same facial hair. <laughs> And then Hartnell, like but like young and has a six pack and they do nothing, but they're, they're like the MILF dudes in American Pie. They're just like going all over the place. <laughs> I thought you would say that they just bone in each other. Just going, <laughs> maybe, oh, maybe. Ex lovers. That's fair. Why not? I think so. Yeah. I think that's the logical conclusion. Okay, hang on. One more sound bite just for funsies. In episode nine, we get this. Take that to the security bay. Which made me think of this soundbite from Ark in Space. Take them away to the security kitchen. (laughs) (laughs) Take them to the security wine lounge. (laughs) And that's it. The rest I've got is really boring shit. (laughs) Who then is credited as the creators of the, the creator of the Time Lords? Oh! Really good question, because it's it, the guy that I read about in the last one, the dude who wrote The Space Pirates, mm. is not in any way affiliated with this, right? He's a, that was a different dude. Mm. Can't remember what his name was. Already forgotten about it. Super memorable chap. But uh, I don't know. I, I guess these two dudes. Terrence this was re- Dix. Yeah, Terrence Dix and... Terry uh, Dix is prolific. Yeah, he is. And, and the Hulkmeister as well. Mm. Hulk- Malcolm the Incredible Hulk. Hulkamania. Yeah. The Hulkster. Shall we jump into ratings? And now it is time to rate this. Did we laugh or hate this? Bing bong, bing bong, hey, la 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 la. Ratings. La. Very Let's quick ratings. Oh, jump what are we giving ratings. this? What are we giving this? Wait, wait, wait. Think about a number. I'm gonna think about. I'm gonna think about a number, but my number will be independent from the gravitas of this thing. Yeah. I, it's not. This is not my retrospective number. Well, you shouldn't be biased based on what we've seen before. Fuck it. I'm gonna go first. You go. Okay. Super speedy. I think this serial is way too long. It was a ten episode arc. Eight of them are virtually the same episode, and we get so much repetition, I think those eight could have been cut down to four. This would have been a great six-episode arc. I don't really get why, you know, why would you coax primitives to fight like primitives, not even give them proper weaponry? We didn't even talk about the matte painting! The matte painting! We even get, we see the edges of the matte painting. But the, some of the characters are amazing. The warlords, great. Wicked time lords, great. Etc. 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 Whatever. Because it's too long, I'm giving this a 3.5. Nice. Strong. Shazam. Okay, mine's along the same lines. I thought there were some really interesting themes here. Um, you know, on along that lines of of mind robber, a toy maker, maniacal thing, making loads of things do its bidding and play. You know, I thought that we might actually get entreated to some arena where all of these, you know, 
peoples from the past would fight against each other um, and form alliances and that whole thing. Didn't yeah. really pan out, but it was still kind of cool. Time Lords were cool. Myth and Legend, goodbyes, highs, lows, sadness, but just too fucking long. I think we could have squared away some of this in like six episodes. Yeah. Um, some of these things could have been linear. We didn't have to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. They didn't, didn't, I don't think it enhanced any, any of the storytelling. That gives me, that leaves me a solid, 3.2. Somehow I knew that you were going to give it a 3.2. I, I, I had that in my head before you started. Yeah. Awesome. We also have some listener minis. Should we jump into that, Lance? Mm-hmm. Listener minis. So the first review comes from none other than Trenton Bless. How you doing, Trenton? Hey, dude. As per usual, Trenton has sent in a maxi review, and as a consequence, we present to you, dear ladies and gentlemen of Podcast Land, the expurgated version. <laughs> but please do go to whobackwhen.com to read it in its full splendor. Trenton, are these getting maxier? I feel like they're getting maxier. <laughs> Come on, Trenton, play the game. <laughs> All right, here we are. Okay, go for it. Trenton's words, words. I love this serial not only because of how it had to be done quickly, but because it keeps my attention the whole way through. We have villains all over from the two generals in the war zones to the war chief, another time lord, and the chilling warlord. As if to compensate for the perceived disaster of the Crotons, his previous who, director David Maloney doesn't put a foot wrong. His studio work is tightly directed with fluid camera moves and precise compositions. Episode 9, where the main plot wraps up and time catches up with the Doctor, is one of the most exciting of the 1960s. The impact of the majestic 10th episode has barely diminished with the passage of time. A huge TARDIS set is pressed into service, and in another first, thrillingly, we see intruders, the Warlord and his guards, Enter the control room. Questions that have persisted since 1963 are answered. The Doctor talks candidly to his companions about his origins, then actually arrives on his home planet. Tantalizingly, this world remains unnamed and we see little of it. Minimalist slabs, mirrors, and rostra. It would remain unnamed until 1973's The Three Doctors. Cool. Rad. That's what that one was called. Uh, Trina goes on. The Time Lords are at their most godlike, mentally conjuring force fields and dematerializing the aliens, or warlords if you like, from existence. Holy shit, we didn't talk about that. No, we didn't. This is maybe the best appearance of the Doctor's people. It's certainly my favorite appearance of the Time Lords. Heck, any Whovian that is well-versed in classic Who will say the same. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm yet to be well-versed. Wait, stay with me, Tim. <laughs> yeah, yeah, give us a chance. <laughs> And he gives this a 4.1. Awesome. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a bump on us. That is a bump, yeah. But Trenton loves Trouton. Trenton loves Trouton. Bingo bongo, that's a t-shirt. <laughs> that is a t-shirt. Get that t-shirt, Trenton. <laughs> All right. We didn't talk about the thing. Yeah. They delete them from history. They erase them from ever having, ex- from existence. I am, I'm curious to see if whether that particular punitive measure ever shows up again. I suspect that it will. Yeah, I mean, it, it seems, seems like, like the worst thing you could possibly all. do. Yeah. And also, it seems almost out of the, it, like, it, like Trenton says, the, the most godlike. That is oh, the most omniscient thing. Yeah. You're right. I don't feel like it's it's outside of the realm of possibility for doctors. Uh, for doctors. <laughs> for time lords. They could just, I mean, they, they could just have a gizmo that travels back to when the dude was born and just go, nope. Yeah, but that's not erasing them from existence. That's like no one will know you were there. It's just, that's just murder. Yeah, but isn't it murder though? It's murder regardless. No, no, but this is like... They go in and they just, you know... This they, is like taking away your entire... Ex- do you know what I'm saying? I was saying, <laughs> this is essentially the abortion thing. It's like, yeah. actually... What, what, at what point do you start existing if they never existed if you took away the twinkle in his dad's eye that's that's something else entirely isn't yeah it? this is the thing like what if his parents really wanted kids maybe they had another fucking kid that's true <laughs> okay so that's what they did they had a gizmo sent it back in time into his dad's nutsack it tweaked with the the sperm right got the a different sperm yeah like tracked down his sperm sure killed it went this is fine so this is more like Whizzed back in the future this is more like time stroke genetics lords yeah. Well, because way, in my head, they, what they're doing is that they they have the vast tapestry of time, like the fates in, you know, Greek. Um, I feel like I feel like I need Drew for this to help. Drew, this Drew would know this. Drew would know this. But the fates and they sit literally above just, the, yeah. there and they weave, yeah. you know, and it's like taking out a stitch. I think that was pretty beautiful. Let's just move That on. was beautiful. <laughs> in my mind, I'm thinking, so, it, but but they are aware of him. The Doctor is aware of him. Yeah, and, and again, that sort of lends credence to the idea that they live outside, outside of, time. of time. Yeah. At this point in the universe. Yeah, sure. Anyway, awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Trenton. Okie dokie. Next one comes from Peter Zunich. Peter Zed, how you doing? The Zedmeister. Peter goes, 
This story runs an entire ten parts and makes it feel like you've only seen six. No, no. <laughs> no, that's the opposite I, of what he says. I definitely saw all ten. <laughs> or all thirty. Uh, he goes on. It never pauses for a breath. After all, they just threw distant past, near past, present, and future into one ball, took the best characters from all of those places and worked them into the script with Go Wild for direction. Top it all off with the Doctor's Law, two companions departing, and a regeneration. Truly epic. Actually, that's kind of a good point. All right, every, carry on. every character is multidimensional with their own story motive their own goals every actor shines and just when you're convinced you saw the best overacting ever another actor tops it yeah <laughs> <laughs> even the background characters get in on the fun like the gunner who lowers his hat over his eyes as he's dying above all though is pt who still easily steals every single scene he's in yeah i'd agree one chilling moment comes when the doctor and the war chief instantly recognize one another as time lords a whole story is told during that first haunting glance we also witness for the first time what the Time Lords do to an entire race that crosses them. As with WH, Troughton will be sorely missed, yet his send-off story couldn't have been better. Likewise, the unexpected lead-up to Jamie and Zoe's departure only makes their departure that much better. Surely they get two of the top send-offs of any companion in both reason and execution. Oh, wow. At least it was fitting of the characters. There are a few oddities, like the charging horde of Romans consisting of only eight excessively edited men. <laughs> it reminds me of Lancelot charging the castle in Monty Python and the Holy Grail. <laughs> At other times, there are strange jump cuts where people appear alone in one shot and surrounded in the next. These discontinuities earn the, re the Retro Rewrite Award. And he concludes, I finished this story yesterday and could easily watch it all over again today. This is one of the most enjoyable Doctor Who stories ever, and as such, I give it a 4.9. If you don't like it, I suggest you go and tell the War Lord. 4.9. Hot 4 damn. I mean, do you know what I think is happening here? I mean, we've got one more mini, but do you, know, do you know what I think is happening here? I think it's very, very easy. I'm not saying that these people are too generous, but I'm saying that they're probably deliberately taking into account the sort of the quote-unquote Whovian historical they've importance. Gone, they've gone cumulative. Yeah, well, I mean, th this, this serial is super important. Hmm. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it, it deserves a better mark for that reason. Like, yes, this is Troughton's departure, but that doesn't make it a better serial. Yes, uh, it would have been. It things. would have been better in my eyes. It would it would have been marked up if the departure in isolation had been handled better, yeah. rather than the gravitas of it. I'm not giving. You know, how many of these serials have we now reviewed of Troughton? Yeah, it doesn't get it doesn't get added bonus points by being at the end. No, that's true. That is true. It, there is one thing. I mean, o overall, I think in both of the minis so far, super good points. But there is one thing in this one that I really, like, thoroughly disagree with. Uh, I, I, <laughs> Dude, my stuff. Get him, Ponkin. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Uh, I know that you disagree with, uh, with this as well. We talked about this only, what, 20 minutes ago? The send-off, Jamie's and Zoe's departure. He says that they get the best send-offs of any companion. No, no. I thought, I thought it was really sad. Mm -hmm. I think it's sad that they've had all these adventures and they don't remember them, any, them anymore. They could have, if they had been placed back in their contexts, their respective contexts, and with, with the full recollection of it, but knowing that, yeah, this had to happen and the doctor, you know, he loves them and, and everything is good. Like, it's not like they parted on, yeah, on but bad then, terms. Yeah, but then, I mean, some of this thing, I'll have to draw on my new who here. Yeah. But those companions that are left behind with the knowledge, it's kind of... They had terrible it, lives because nothing compares um, to it, you mean. Yeah, it's Adam and Eve and the apple, isn't it? What? They've now had a bite of the apple and... Yeah. And now, now they're cast out of paradise, as it were. Uh, the paradise being ignorant. Yeah, I don't know. I get it. But okay, tell you what, the <laughs> Jamie. Yeah. Uh, according to the Time Lords, Jamie does remember his first adventure with the Doctor. What's his first adventure with the Doctor? Is it, it actually? Wait, hang on. Oh no! Is it that Jamie remembers the Highlanders, and he actually doesn't remember ever going into space? Very possible. Holy shit! I think that's exactly what happens. Because I was going to say, wait, hang on, hasn't Jamie just seen the future? Isn't it really cruel to put him back in his own time? Yeah. Like knowing I mean, that there's a whole world out there. I think that anything other than some some like portent given here, or not portent, uh, some gravitas given here. Yeah. He left me a little hollow because I don't know. It was I didn't want tenant style emotion. I wanted something. Yeah, I wanted something deeper. Anyway, mm. but when we get to the the retrospective, we're gonna have to compare companion send offs. Yeah, yeah. 
So we'll get to that. Either way, Peter, thank you very much. Awesome mini as always. We've got one more, and holy smokes, it is a maxi. <laughs> this one comes from Paul. Paul Forber. I want to say Forber. Faubert. 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 I think Faubert. Faubert. Really sorry, Paul. <laughs> as I said, Paul has sent in a maxi, so here is uh, the truncated version. I'll start it off. Paul goes, Terence Dix and Malcolm Hulk's 10-episode epic developed because the production team scrapped some commission scripts for the show's sixth season. Yep. While episode reprises seemed short, titles appearing over a film clip of blazing machine guns provide some padding. The pace of the first three episodes is quick, adding mystery to what seems like history. The next four recap and reveal plot points fast enough to keep the narrative going. Characters race from place to place and argue until the penultimate episode is played, largely for laughs with the Spanish rebel commander taking the comical lead. Dick, he was Mexican. I think so too. Okay. <laughs> At the end, the non-interventionist, awesomely powerful Time Lords arrive, making consequential, unwelcome decisions. <laughs> the Patrick Troughton era began when William Hartnell was transformed, but fellow Time Lord, the War Chief, was not so lucky when the Warlord ordered his execution. Also, early in the story, the Doctor used his sonic screwdriver on an actual screw twice. Yeah, yeah, true. true. Super, super true. Uh, he does that once before. Uh, when we get to see the sonic screwdriver for the very first time in Fury from the Deep, he uses it just like, en passant, oh, here's the sonic screwdriver I've got. Boop, boop, boop. And he uh, unscrews something. Pretty rad. Uh, and then I think in the following serial, he uses a regular screwdriver. What a letdown. <laughs> <laughs> uh, either way, Paul, thank you super, super duper for sending this in. Ladies and gentlemen, read the full maxi in its unstoppable glory on whobackwhen.com. And a high five Paul online. He is at Wordsmith Paul. Bing bong, future Bonkin here. Shortly after packing up the mixer mics at Al, we actually received another listener mini. That listener mini came from Erin Zimmerman. That's right, Dr. Z. Hello, Erin. How you doing? Erin goes, I love this serial. It's got a slow burning mystery, intrigue, and a real sense of tragedy. Also, it hails the start of Pertwee, the best doctor. That's right, I said it. Ooh, controversial, Erin. Well, as we're just about to start reviewing the Pertwee era, uh, I am super duper looking forward to seeing whether or not I'm going to agree with you. <laughs> Erin goes on, I don't know if this story had to be ten episodes long. I guess they wanted to get the most out of what seemed to be a huge set-piece budget for Troughton's farewell, but I never got bored. I enjoyed the dawning sense that something wasn't right and the teasing out of the mystery over several episodes. I also thought the ending really stood out because unlike New Who, classic stories don't tend to go for the feels a lot. Watching the Doctor come to the realization that he has no choice but to call on the Time Lords and all that that entails, especially after having seemed to win the day, was heartrending. Jamie in particular loses so much, much more than Donna who meets a similar fate. It was a sad way to say goodbye to my favorite three-person combination in the TARDIS. Sweet. Someone who agrees with us. <laughs> Aaron also includes, um, as per usual, a few bullet points. I'm going to rattle them off. Saying we're back in history when they arrive seems like a very odd phrasing coming from the Doctor. Old school gas masks? Are you my mummy? <laughs> I love the early undertone of eeriness in a seemingly normal setting. I wish I had Jedi mind glasses or a Jedi mind monocle. <laughs> yes. <laughs> as do I. The Doctor's recorder seems to be a telescope as well. Hmm. Um, where did Lady Jennifer grab Jamie's knife from? Uh, Erin? A gentleman doesn't tell. The War Chief has the most villainous looking facial hair. Yep. Checks out. For not involving World War II, there sure seem to be a lot of Nazi-esque characters in this serial. If I'm ever surrounded by an enemy ambush, my first words will be, don't worry, I'm not going to hurt you. <laughs> Jesus, the ethnic stereotypes in this serial are hard to watch. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> and lastly, Erin says, there were only two women in the entire huge cast, and they had to ditch one halfway through. Boo. And she gives this a rating of 4.8 out of 5. Wow, uh, that is a super high rating, Erin. Glad you like it. <laughs> Just really, really quick comments. Yes, 100% agree with you. Uh, well, as you already know now, we are totes malotes on the same page as far as the companion goodbyes are concerned. And one more very, very quick point. The old school gas masks, are you my mummy reference? I think at this point it is actually impossible for Doctor Who to include gas masks without making a reference to them. In fact, the next New Who that we're going to be reviewing is The Poison Sky, 
And in that, Tennant himself does a Are You My Mummy reference the second he puts on a gas mask. So, it, yeah. <laughs> oh, they were innocent times, the pre-New Who gas mask days. <laughs> Anyway, thank you very much for sending that in. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you can high-five Erin on Twitter. She is at Dr. Z. That's Z with double Ds. Thanks, Erin. Back to the show. Bing bong. So, that's the end of Troughton. That is the end of Troughton. We're going to have to have a bonus episode. We're going to do the Patrick Troughton retrospective. But after that, we are starting with the third Doctor in full colour. It is... Oof. It's Pertwee in... Spearhead from space. With autons and everything. Hot damn. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. I, I remember seeing that. One scene in particular. And then the next new Who will be... The Poison Sky. And the next audio Who will be... The Cannibalists. <laughs> Most likely dropping in 2017. <laughs> TBC. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Ciao, ciao. Bye. <laughs> Kablamo. Did you enjoy the show? Then please do what the cosmos compels you to and spread the gospel of who back when. Tell your friends. Don't have any friends? No problemo. Tell some strangers. Like us on Facebook. That's facebook.com slash who back when. All in one word. Are you on Google Plus? The find us on Google Plus. That's plus who back when. And when you do, tell us why you're on Google Plus. Who back when just got its very own Twitter account. No lie. So give us a follow. You guessed it. That's add who back when. All in one word. Check us out on SoundCloud, vote us up on Reddit, listen to us on Stitcher, and head on over to our website, whobackwhen.com, where you can leave a comment, submit a review of your own, and peruse our visual index of aliens, monsters, and more, which increases in Kablamos with every episode. And lastly, give us a rating and review on iTunes. Not only would it make us super chuffed, and it really, really would, but as thanks, we will transmigrate your iTunes nom de plume into the credit list of trailers for fake Doctor Who audiobooks produced by Who Back When. Have a poke around our bonus episodes to make more sense of that. That's it. Rock on and be rad and excellent to each other. Catch your ear balls in our next classic Who review, new Who review, or, <laughs> still funny, audio Who review. Cha ciao. Who back when?